Praise the Lord, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to open up with an announcement. So if Sister Denise will make her way forward, and I think I probably know what the announcement is in the back. If you have been in the last few services, you're in for a treat. Sister Denise. Good morning, church. How are you? All right. Yes, it is about our Project Hydro Color Blasters. Okay, raise your hand if you've heard about this. Oh, I see a few hands that have not. All righty. Okay, so I'm going to make this very brief. Um, September 18th, from 11 to 1, ages 7 to 11, we are doing our Hydro Color Blasters. So if you were here last week, you saw they had their special guns that shoot out watercolors. Um, so that's what we're doing, and we're going to have cotton candy. We're going to have um, lots of other kinds of colorful candy. We are having snow cones, um, games, different games we're going to do, and we will have prizes, and I'll talk more about prizes um, later. But if you do not have one of these and you would like to have one, could you raise your hand so I'll know? Okay. All right, thank you very much. Don't forget about this, and please share this. We would love to grow our um, Kids Power Hour, our Sunday School, our Under Construction Junior Youth Group. We would love to see more kids coming in. All right, thank you. Can we all stand? Let's open with prayer. Ask that God's presence be with us as well. We don't need to ask him. We, the Bible tells us where two or three are gathered, he's already there. But let's lift him up. Father, so thankful for this opportunity to come into the house, to honor you, to magnify you, and worship you. I ask, God, that there be a sweetness of your presence. God, as we sing unto you, as we praise you and worship, Father, come and fill this sanctuary with your presence and minister to the hearts and the minds this morning as we honor you. For truly, Lord, you are worthy as none other, and we give you the praise. In your name we pray, in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Lord bless you, you may be seated. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all ye earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all ye earth. For
Good morning. Welcome. If we all stand, we'll go to prayer this morning. Uh, as we continue to remember our ongoing prayer requests, uh, Phyllis Ante, uh, Sister Mary Blackford recovering from her back surgery this week. So continue to lift her up as well. Uh, the father of Brother Duke, George Duke, the son of Sister Friend, Michael Friend, remember Joyce Jackson, Christine Kendrick. Uh, we've got a, quite a list of new requests as well, so buckle up here for a few minutes. These, you know, the Lord knows the needs. Uh, continue to remember Ruby Henry, uh, grandmother, or yes, grandmother of Rachel Niece. She was supposed to have back surgery this week as well, was not able to complete it due to some complications, so continue to remember her. Uh, remember Nellie, the sister of Bernie, uh, Brother Bernie. She needs a healing touch. Uh, continue to remember the father of Sister Glenda, Forrest Scott. He's doing much better. His oxygen numbers are coming up, she told me this morning, but he still needs prayer. Uh, remember the niece and Sorrel family as um, passing away of their brother Carl, nephew. Uh, continue to lift up Sister Patty Vite for the healing of her neck and shoulder. And remember Sister Stella and Brother John and their family as they had a brother pass away this week as well. Uh, remember uh, Sister Simone and Brother Corky. Their brother-in-law, Tom Ewing, is in the hospital uh, with blood clots. Needs a healing touch from the Lord. You know, I sit here and I think about all these prayer requests. And not only are the people who need the healing need to be prayed for, but remember their caregivers, their, their loved ones who are taking care of them. It's just as hard on them as it is the people who are in, the, in these situations. So continue to remember them as well as we... And we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time together as a congregation. Lord, we come forth, Lord, to, to lay these prayer requests at the foot of your cross. To lift you up, Lord, for your will and your glory to be shown in all of these. Lord, speak to their hearts, Lord. Be with comfort, Lord. A healing touch. Lord, whether there be some financial needs. Lord, we know that you are the great provider. You touch in each and every situation. You open the doors, Lord. Let us lift you up. Give you the glory. Jesus, in all things and all praise we give unto you. Lord, in all things we give you the glory, and in your name, and everyone says, Amen. You may be seated. A uh, couple quick announcements as well. Uh, so this evening will be our back to school prayer. So we'll be praying for all of our kids, all of our workers, teachers, aides, uh, whatever you do in the school districts. A uh, lot going on in our world today. Our school needs prayer. These, they, they need that shelter over them. Uh, and as well as this evening, Brother Holly will be back with us this evening. So come, invite somebody, uh, expecting a great move of the, of the word. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, ladies' conference is on September 10th. Men's conference is on September 17th. Uh, both of those registrations are open and online. Uh, if you need any information, see myself for men's conference, see Sister Paula for women's conference. Uh, there is some information on the bulletin board out, front, out in the vestibule as well. Uh, the church annual yard sale will be Saturday, September 11th uh, from 9 to 1. There is a sign-up sheet up in the vestibule as well. Uh, if the ushers want to make their way forward at this time as well. And then... Uh, as a note, move the mission cans. There's still some move the mission cans out on the table in the vestibule, but you may start turning those cans in at any time. So see, please, uh, Rex 2 or Sister Amanda or any of the youth group members, so you can turn those cans in. All those extra coins that you have laying around your house, fill in the can and let the kids count them. Uh, our scripture for today is a familiar one. It says, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? For the same measure that you meet with it shall it be measured to you again. Lord Jesus, we ask that you take this offering, Lord, for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver, Lord. Multiply it so that your word can be spread. Lord Jesus, in all that we are and all that we do, we give you the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to open up with a song that says you deserve the glory and the honor. The chorus talked about you do miracles so great. And Friday things looked pretty rough with my dad. He was at a critical point. Prayer went out to multiple individuals in church. 
And you know, whatever God wills, he deserves the glory and the honor. Regardless if the miracle doesn't happen the way I want it or you want it, he still deserves the glory and the honor. Sing as if you've experienced this in your life. Sing to him this morning. You deserve the glory.
secret I am this morning. Oh, so faithful to know him this morning. And just not to know he's the I am, but to know his name, Jesus. Oh, the authority that's in the name of Jesus. So thankful. Let's sing about that name.
many knows hell is terrified when the church gathers and exalts the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee is going to bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord if he's your Lord shout unto him this morning I think hell is nervous because it's Sunday morning and Sunday morning's supposed to be a little slower. Come on, we're, we're tired. We had a long weekend. We're, Sunday, we're supposed to take Sunday morning off, but this church began to worship the name of Jesus and all of a sudden the glory began to descend and we're ready to hear a word from heaven. We're so thankful that you joined us this morning. For every visitor, thank you so much for being here. We're so delighted to have you. But we're excited to have Brother Shad Holly with us this morning. And and he is no stranger to this church, and we love and appreciate him. He is a dynamic preacher. He's a good friend, and most importantly, he's a Christian. How many thinks it's important for the preacher to be a Christian? Amen. So we're excited to have Brother Holly. His family uh, is going to be with us tonight. So we're excited to have the Holly family with us this morning. But I want us to pay attention to the word of the Lord. I believe he's got a word for this congregation this morning. Do we believe that? Why don't we welcome Brother Holly as he comes and preaches the word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but I feel Jesus in this house. Anybody love Jesus? The Bible says, oh, clap your hands. Oh, you people. It doesn't stop there. Can we clap our hands? Lift up our voice to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, you're so good to me, Jesus. If you have in your Bibles, please. Revelation chapter number one. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Feel the presence of God. Can we lift up our hands all over this place? There's a touch of your spirit here today, Lord. I don't want not one opportunity, Lord, that your presence is passing by and that I don't reach out and touch you. And grab a hold of everything that you have for us today. Mama. Revelation chapter number one. I do give honor to you, this great church. Pastor Hideball, in his absence, Pastor Hideball is going to be delivering the word at Calvary, Cincinnati. Can we just pray for Pastor Hideball right now? that the Lord will use him mightily. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, a special anointing over Pastor Hideball. Anointing for this day, Lord Jesus, to speak your word, declare your doings in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you for your power. Hallelujah. Your glory is in this place. I give honor to your assistant pastor, Brother Tyler Himes and his wife. They have so many degrees and and, I almost feel intimidated talking to them. No, probably, probably the most humble young couple that I've ever met. And you are blessed with a great young couple. Could we give the Lord a hand clap? I love you all. You're all doing awesome. I give honor to every elder. Elder Lyle, it's so good to see you. I honor you, sir. Thank you for praying for me this morning. Brother Bobby, I had so much fun last night in that Spanish group. And, and uh, I just, I give you honor. Brother Howard, Brother Howard, and every elder in this building. 
I give you honor. If you have Revelation chapter number one. Go read verse one. And then we'll go skip around a little bit. The Lord gave me this message and this word. For me, for you, for the church, the local church, for the body. And uh, if I've ever, if I've ever heard the Lord speak to me, he did about a week and a half ago or two weeks ago, 3.44 a.m. in the morning, smacked me right in the face. And you know that I can't effectively preach to you unless it preaches to me first. But the Holy Ghost is going to help us, and here's what he wants us to hear. You have that revelation? Chapter number 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. How many believe that we are living in the last days? Things are moving so quickly. And uh, it's time for us to, to, to get serious about this thing. Jesus is coming back. And he sent and signified it by his angel and to his servant, John. Everybody say John. John. Now verse number five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us. How many know that Jesus loved us? He washed us from our sins with his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God his Father. To him be glory and dominion eh, forever and ever. Somebody say, so be it. Amen in Jesus' name. Then God spoke. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is which was, which is to come, the Almighty. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I, John, also am your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos. Everybody say Patmos. For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, <laughs> today, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, and Thyatira, and to Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And uh, we're going to stop there, and I'll read Revelation 3 once we get going. Is that all right? So for the next few moments, the Lord laid this upon my heart, a letter from Patmos. He cared so much for you that he showed up to John in a vision. And he says, I want you to tell my people. I want you to tell you the things that they're doing good. And we're going to commend that and compliment you. But there's other things that you need to pick up the, the slack a little bit. You need to tighten your bootstraps. And you need to take the, the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And, 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 and the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and I'm going to help you. And if you will repent, I will show you things to where you need to go and to where you need to be and what you need in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Could we raise our hands all over this building? Thank you for loving me so much, Jesus, that you would take the time out to speak to me. Oh, <laughs> Oh, let us have the ears to hear what you are saying to the Spirit in Jesus' name. You received the word today. In advance, are you going to receive the word today? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You may be seated in Jesus' name. You did awesome, praise team. Every song given glory unto God. And hallelujah. 
holy, holy. He's the great I am. There is none other beside him. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And there's one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. And, and uh, there's nobody like him. Somebody shout hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the great I am. Hallelujah. He's still performing miracles, and, and I know that this is Sunday morning, and like Brother Tyler said, and we have this mind, this concept that, that we're just supposed to come in here on a Sunday morning and, and uh, hear a little cute little Bible study, and you know, we're half asleep, but, but we need to get out of that mindset. We need to be in the mindset that every time we come through those doors, it's a chance and opportunity to get a hold of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus is in this place, and if you have a need, and if you need a miracle, you can have it on a Sunday morning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. And since we are apostolic, can I go ahead and tell you a testimony? There was a young man in my church just three months ago. He was facing death. And a few years ago, he needed a new kidney. And another sister in our church, she donated one of her kidneys to him. What a great friend. And what a great friend. Jesus is such a friend to us. He loved us so much that he went to Calvary and laid down his life so that I and you might have life and have it more abundantly. So my friend, so my friend, the church in Zanesville, he needed a new kidney again. And uh, uh, he got the devastating news that, that there was only a 1% chance at a match for his kidney. And uh, he's, young, he's a young man, got a, got a beautiful little baby and a beautiful little girl. And, and uh, he was preparing for the end of life because they could not find the match for Brother Brad. And, and uh, he was faithful, even though he was going through some trials and tribulation. And although there was desolation all around him, uh, he, he was still faithful to come to the house of God. Although weak in body, he would still... I would look over and, you know, when I was there and saw Brother Brad with his hands raised and his mouth open, always giving God all the glory and all the praise. That's very commendable. And that's actually what we're supposed to do. No matter what we're going through, God is always worthy. Whether I'm sick or feel good or whether I'm healthy, He is still worthy of all of our praise. So, Brother Brad... Brother Brad, there was, he was getting desperate. It was coming down to the end of his life, and he was going to make uh, uh, plans to go on vacation with his family. Come time for vacation, and the plans got canceled, and he was feeling so bad. And, and he's like, oh, my goodness. And, and, and I, can, I can just see, and, and I don't know about you. I don't know if he was fearful, but, but I could see that being a fearful situation, you know. Uh, this really is going to end, you know. I still love you, Lord, no matter what. I feel like I've been on my Isle of Patmos. I feel like I've been isolated and I'm all alone, but uh, you're still worthy of all of our praise. Do you know that that week that he was supposed to go on vacation and his plans, they just got dumped. And, and uh, on, on that, that weekend, he goes to the hospital and the OSU calls and they found a match for Brother Brad. He was only a 1% chance for a match in a new kidney. I'm telling you, my God is so good. He just went to the doctor. He just went to the doctor a few weeks ago, and they said, it looks like it's a brand new kidney, like nothing ever happened, like you've always had your liver function, your kidney function has never been this good. I'm telling you, we serve an awesome God. And he's in this house today. You might feel like you're on the island all alone, but Jesus is in the place. Jesus is in this place. Go ahead and praise him. Clap your hands. Give God praise. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. Let's talk about John just for a moment. John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus called 
Peter and Andrew, and then he went and called James and John. You know, come on, you, won't you follow me, boys? So they laid down their fishing net and and their trade. They were fishermen by trade, and and uh, it is so important. I was talking to Brother Tyler, and was talking about education. Have you ever seen a generation in a group that wants to read so many books about the Bible, but they're not in the Bible? Why won't we read the very Word of God? <laughs> Why don't we? The Bible's got to be the centralization. Then you can break off and study what thus saith the Word of the Lord. And I commend this, this church and the young people. You are a smart group, and, and your leaders, Sister Hyde of all, I honor you today too. And, and uh, they put the emphasis on, you know, education. And you have to be a smart boy and girl to go to Miami University. And uh, I, I, I commend you. I, I congratulate you for getting your, your degree and furthering your education. I'm all about it. But you know what I like even more than that? <laughs> you can get your education in your degrees, but God. God's got to be first. And as long as God's first in your life, he will enlarge your territory. Brother Bobby, could you stand real fast? I feel the spirit of the Lord all over you right now. Stretch forth your hand right now. Pray for Brother Bobby. The Lord's going to enlarge his territory. Lay your hands on him right now. The spirit of prophecy is in this place. The anointing is on your life. The anointing is on your life. Ayala mama, yes, Enlarge his territory right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Worship the Lord all over this place. Come on, stand to your feet and give God high praise. Anybody need anything from Jesus? He is here. Emma, Jesus is here. Anything can happen. Pray, pray, get God lifted up. Pray, get God lifted up. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Anybody feel the Lord in here? All you have to do is reach out and touch him. The King of Kings is in this place. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So John, the Lord called James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and, and they followed Jesus. James and John even got the nickname the sons of thunder, man, they were, they were fired up. They were zealous. And, and, uh, I love, I love John. The Bible says that John was the beloved disciple. He was the beloved apostle and, uh, Jesus loved John. And in turn, John loved Jesus. And, and I don't know about the other disciples, but I could, I could kind of see them, you know, why, what is it about John? Why, why does the Lord love John so much? And, and, uh, it was a pure love, but, but John really loved the Lord. He really did. And, and if you will notice in scripture, it was always Peter, James, and John. It seemed like those were the Lord's three closest, uh, disciples. That was the Lord's inner circle. And, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, when Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, and he said, come on, Peter, James, and John. Won't you come up here with me a little bit while I pray? And Peter, James, and John, they're the ones that were on the Mount Transfiguration. They saw, they saw three beings like, whoa, I see, I see Moses, I see Elias, Elias Elijah, and, and uh, who is that? Who is the third one? And, and, and John, you know, oh, that's the Christ, the Son of God of the living God and, and he got a revelation. He had a revelation of who Jesus is and, and that's what it all boils down to. Not only do you have to have faith, but when you get a revelation, no matter what's going on in my life, I know that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. And when you have a revelation of Jesus, he can and will do everything. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Jesus is in this place. It was John. He was the only disciple. He was the only disciple that was with Jesus. When Jesus raised Darius's, or Jarius' uh, 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 daughter. And uh, it was James and John, you know, up, up to the mountain with Jesus to pray. And uh, John is so meticulous in his writing. And I read one scholar where they believed that the book of Revelation was written before St. John in John 1, 2, and 3. And uh, if you look at it, it kind of makes sense. And, and John is so meticulous in his writing. It was John. He, had, he knew who Jesus was in the past, in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. And he spoke this world into existence by his mouth. And that pro, uh, probed John to write, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was light, and, and he's the light of the world, and he is the life, and, and uh, he became flesh and dwelt among us. John had, he was so meticulous. He had such a relationship with Jesus Christ, and, and he loved the Lord, but, but his relationship was, was with Jesus in his past, the Jesus in the beginning, God in the beginning, and during his earthly ministry, which was about three and a half years, it was John he saw the, the dead raised. It was John. He saw blind Bartimaeus be healed and his eyes open up. It was John that saw Jesus unstop the deaf ears and the woman that had an issue of blood. It was John in the same crowd when that woman was, was reaching and if I could just touch the hem of his garment and if you can just touch the hem of his garment, it doesn't matter what hell you're going through right now. You might feel like you're on your Patmos but I have a letter from from Patmos to you today. You're going to be all right. His word. He sent his word to us and healed us. By his stripes, we are healed. I know there's a rise in the coronavirus again, but I refuse to live in fear. His word says, Psalms 91 and 11, I will give my angels charge over thee. I will keep you in all my ways. Somebody shout, yeah! Clap your hands and give God praise. Spirit of the living God. It was John. It was John who witnessed all these things. He was so meticulous in his writing. And he wanted to call fire down because that town in Samaria that didn't accept Jesus Christ. He's ready. Like, he's like ready to send him to send him to hell, you know. Like, you can't believe you cannot accept in Jesus Christ. Jesus had to tell him, said, if they're not against me, they're for me. Said, Set her down, bud. But he loved Jesus so much. He was so passionate about Jesus. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the Son of the living God. Oh, God, that spirit. Jesus robed himself in flesh. That spirit is walking in this place today. I know that some of you, I know that some of you are battling depression. I know, I know some of you are battling uh, loneliness and, and isolation. But do you know that when they tried to boil John in boiling hot oil and, and they lifted him down in that pot of oil and, and man, the, his flesh should have just, just fallen off of him like, like he was being filleted. They dipped old John in that boiling oil and when they lifted him back up, not one one speck on his skin. They tried, they tried to destroy him. And let me tell you something here today. The devil's been trying to tell you that you're not going to make it. He's trying to destroy you. But listen here. If the devil could have wiped you out, he would already wiped you out. If the devil could have killed you, he would already killed you. But look what, look what, look what. You're here today on a Sunday morning. You're alive. It's his breath. In my lungs, I'm going to pour out my praise. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Can we open up our mouth all over this building? 
The Lord loves our praise. No matter what John was going through, he says, I'm going to come to church and I'm going to worship you not only in my emotion, but I'm going to worship you in spirit and truth. Can we lift up those hands all over this place? The spirit is moving. Can you get that revelation, chapter number three, ready for me? It was John at the Last Supper. The Lord said, one of you are going to betray me. And all the other disciples, is it I, Lord? Is it I? But John had such a, a relationship with Jesus. Jesus was relaxing on the couch. John went over, leaned his head up against Jesus' chest. He had such a relationship. Nothing else mattered. But I had, he had, you have to hear the heartbeat of God. Because if we serve God on only emotion, nobody would show up on church every time we had a headache. Nobody would show up to church every time that we were tired. Nobody would show up to church when the kids had a soccer game. But because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, because you know that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, it could be hell out there, but if I could just get into His presence. Lord, I'm not going to ask you, is it I? I know it's not me because I love you. I want to know in this building, in this building, are, are we serving God just so it'll ease our conscience? Do we show up to church just so it'll ease our conscience? Or do we come into this place because we know that, that we're not perfect? That's the reason we do come to church. You know, we get the bad rap. All the, you, you just go to church because you're religious. and No, religious is the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, and I go to church just because I'm standing up here. Ah, it doesn't mean that I don't have problems. Hey, I need Jesus just as much. This message is for me more as much as it is for you. So, John, so our scripture text in Revelation, you know, he said, I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm going to be your companion in tribulation. I am your brother. And we're going to have to go through some stuff and through some junk. And I don't know about you, but the past year, since 2020, has just been I mean, just ridiculous and, and had to go through, through some stuff. Anybody gone through some stuff in the past year or year and a half? And, and it hasn't always been a bed of roses. And, and it's not always peaches and cream. But look at you. You had enough desire. You had enough faith. You had enough relationship. No matter what's going on in my family. My friends have left me. My family has walked out of my life. But I'm still coming. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Can we stand all over this building? We're going to stand while we read this scripture. I've been so burdened. So John was exiled to Patmos. Patmos is mentioned one time in the Bible. We read it. Patmos was not a vacation island. Patmos, they banished people, they exiled people to Patmos to die. For our flesh to die. John was exiled to Patmos. And uh, uh, he was with a bunch of hardcore criminals. He was with a bunch of rapists. And murders, and why he, he he walked with the Lord. He saw all these miracles, and he had a revelation. He knew who Jesus was in his past. But but and and I love the Lord John. I could just hear him cry, and uh, he was praying. The Bible says that I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Here I am. I've got a hurting back because I've been sleeping on a bunch of rocks. That's all Patmos is is a bunch of rocks, and and there's nothing comfortable about Patmos, and and. Uh, there's a lot of suffering that goes on at Patmos. And how many have you had to, had to suffer just a little bit for, for Christ's sake? But I'm here to tell you, it will be worth it all in the end. It will be worth it all. It's when you think that family has forsaken you and nobody's around in your life. John was an old man now. 
Jesus was already dead. He had already ascended back up into heaven. And uh, Peter and Andrew, they were dead. He was, John was the youngest disciple. He was the youngest apostle. And uh, all of his friends were gone. Matthew, Bartholomew, and, and uh, all the disciples dead. He didn't have anybody to call and say, hey, man, can you give me a word of encouragement? Hey, can you, can you send me a text? You know, like, you're going to make it, buddy. He didn't have any of that. And he had to show up to church all by himself. And let me tell you something. We're supposed to gather here in the local assembly. But when you go out there, you're still the church on Monday. You're still the church on Tuesday. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? We are the walking embodiment of the church of the living God. Somebody shout amen. He had to go to church alone. Nobody to pray for him. Nobody to encourage him. And the Lord shows up, his friend, the beloved Christ, the son of the living God. In the beginning was the word. I knew you then. I was with you. I saw you do perform these miracles. And the miracle worker is still performing miracles in this building today. He is in Jesus' name. The Lord spoke to him. He said, I want you to send the letter to Ephesus. Uh, Ephesus, they... They, they forgot their first love and, and, and Smyrna. And, and I, will send, I want you to send these letters to these churches. And, and uh, Philadelphia, they, they stayed true to the word of God. They were loyal. And uh, they have the love of Christ still. And uh, I commend them. And, and he goes through and he tells what the churches had done right. And, and what the church needs to, 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 to repent of. And, 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 and to make things right for the Lord's coming. Coming. And, and we always, anytime we're on a place, and uh, like an isle of Patmos, when we feel all isolated, we're isolated from the world, but we are connected to God. Because Patmos is the place where our flesh dies. You have to have an altar every day in our life if we want to live. If it takes you 10 minutes or an hour, do whatever you got to do, but just crucify this flesh so that you can live. That's hard. That's hard stuff. I'm talking about me. In 2017, I had such an encounter with Jesus. The Lord shook me. And uh, I took pride in getting up early. And I didn't even have to set my alarm. And it was just like clockwork, about 3.30 or 4 in the morning. I Man, it was just like clockwork. And, and uh, uh, then it became familiar to me. Can I just be totally transparent to you? I love Jesus with all my heart. The anointing of God is on, is on this life. And, and I'm not just going to let it anybody touch the anointing. I'm not going to let just anybody touch and break what's in my box. You know, I had to get my own oil. You got to don't be jealous and don't compare yourself to Elder Lyle's ministry because you didn't have to go through what he went through to get the oil. You got to get your own oil. I'm so familiar and we know how to come in here and clap on the offbeat and we know the songs and we are, we are singing these songs, you know, and our mind's on work and our mind is on something else. Our, our mind is on, heaven forbid, a TV show. And, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking, I'm not preaching against things. You know, you let pastor do that. I'm just telling you what worked for me. I had to cut some things out of my life to crucify this flesh so that I could live. So the Lord, he compliments every church except Laodicea. He had no compliments for Laodicea. You know why? You know why? Laodicea was lukewarm. The Bible says that God will spew us out of his mouth if we're lukewarm. I would much rather you be cold and not even say that you're a Christian rather than go through the motions and your heart not be in serving me. Anybody want a heart to serve the master, the creator of the universe, the one who bled and died for me? So you know what happened? 
the Lord took that away from me because I was, I was so familiar. I just, it came to me. I didn't have to set my alarm. And then the Lord, he Lord, Lord began to deal with me. It's like, I'll give it to somebody else. I'll talk to somebody else. Whoever wants to seek me and whoever wants to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, I'll go to somebody else. I'm telling you, I repented. Oh, we got to be in a constant state of prayer. There has to be an even balance. You know, we can't just come in here on Sunday and run and shout and not even pick up our Bible, not even say the name of Jesus until Wednesday or sometimes next Sunday. That's entertainment. This is not entertainment. This is the house of God. Spirit of the living God is in this place. Could we read Revelation chapter number three? Mainly because of my bladder woke me up here about a week and a half ago. I was going down the steps, and I always look when the Lord wakes me up. I look at the time. It's amazing. I mean, he will wake you up at the same time or the vicinity all the time. So I was like, hey, 344, is that a scripture? And when I was walking down the steps asking God, what scripture, what, what chapter and what, what chapter 3 and what verse 44 do you want me to know? And he says, he gave me Revelation chapter number 3 and verse number 4. He did. Let's read Revelation 3 and 1. Hallelujah. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things, saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain, that they are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore Thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If there therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come unto thee. Thou hast a few names even here today, which has not defiled their garments, which has not soiled their garments. You keep being faithful. God sees the precious faithful saints of God. And this is not for everybody, but it is for everybody. They shall walk with me while, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. The Lord is so merciful and gracious to us today. And the church at Sardis, their problem was they were active in their worship, but it stopped on Sunday. They didn't have a true heart of worship. They didn't have a true heart of relationship. And if that speaks to you today, no, it's not coming for me. I'm just the messenger. I don't know who you are. But for me, I allowed the Lord and the Holy Ghost to convict me. Sorry, Jesus, if that's me. I repent, Lord Jesus. Give me a heart of worship. I don't want to become so familiar to the Spirit of God. I want this to be about a relationship. I want everybody's hands in the building. Sister Amanda, can you come? We're going to repent all over this building. Lift up your hands all over this building. Oh. Oh. Oh, I worship you out of a sincere heart, Lord. The Bible says that all heaven rejoices at one repentant soul. Repent. Lift up your hands. Cry out to God. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm sorry, Lord. It's not about me. It's all about you. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to appear that I have everything all right. But my heart's away from you. 
The healer, the King of Kings is in this house today. What I'm going to call for next, we've repented. God is not waiting on us to mess up and to kick you out. He wants our honesty. The Bible says that His mercy endureth forever. Did one of your kids ever make a mistake? What do you do? You even think I'm going to kick my 10-year-old toddler out of the house because he made a mistake? No, I'm going to correct him and I'm going to wrap my arms of love around him. We correct them because we do love them. If we didn't love them, I wouldn't preach to you like this today. So we've repented all over the building. There's such a touch of God here on this Sunday morning. And if you, in your heart, it's your desire to live with God, for God, and walk with God every day, would you make your way to this altar, rededicate some things, recommit some things in your life? This is home. Nobody's going to make fun of you for walking to this altar. Nobody's going to make fun of you for running and jumping and dancing. If you're in this building and you have a physical need, the healer is in this place. Would you please come to this altar? The Lord, He loves us so much. He's telling us to wake up today. If your garments are soiled, all you have to do is repent. I want you to strengthen that which is weak today. He's here to help you. If you have any need whatsoever, if you're addicted, if you have a, an addiction that you're struggling with, would you please come to this altar? Look, look at this. People all over the place. We're not singling anybody out because we all have something that we could give God. Hands raised all over this place. They're going to sing and we're going to worship and we're going to get everything from God that He has promised us in Jesus' name. I raise a hallelujah. Thank you for waking me up today. In the presence Thank you for giving me space to repent. Thank you, Lord. 